Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna look at the Holosun HS507K X2. Now I have to premise this entire video by saying, if you are somebody looking for the reviewer who has all the comparisons, the pros, the cons, and all the specifications, well, this is not going to be the video for you. However, if you are maybe new to firearms, new to open reflex sights, looking for an optic, maybe you're a fan of the SIG P365 and trying to figure out what red dot to put on yours, well, this might be the video for you. And so I come at this from the novice perspective. I've been going through a journey. I'm fairly new to firearms, but at this point, trying to grow, trying to evolve and getting a red dot on my carry pistol. And that's the biggest thing for me, the fact that this is my carry weapon. And I have a number of thoughts that have gone into this and why I've configured this exact pistol the exact way that I have. And so in today's video, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna mount it up. We're gonna get into some detail. I'm gonna take it to the range, put my first 100 rounds down range and get some impressions so I can share them with you. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. And so now, as we get into the Hollow Sun HS507K, X2. So why did I go with this Hollow Sun reflex sight in the first place? Well, as I mentioned, I did want to start getting into red dots, testing different optics, and really pinning down the final configuration of my carry handgun. So when I was testing other red dots, they were cheap. They were quite frankly inexpensive and just were not what I thought was a trustworthy piece of equipment to put on my carry firearm. Let's be real, if you're carrying a firearm in the first place as an everyday carry, bottom line is you have a reason to believe you need some sort of self-protection and with that, it needs to be reliable. So the last thing that I personally felt as though I wanted to have on my carry handgun, just a piece of inferior equipment. So now with the Holosun HS507K, I had something that I thought at least at this point, I can trust and rely on. Granted, I know that people do have different opinions about red dots on their carry pistols, but at this point, this is what I've opted to go with. So the Holosun HS507K does have a great reputation. People seem to really like it, both for the quality of the features and the reliability. So I thought it made a lot of sense. Now, when it comes to installation, very simple, very straightforward, and not a lot to it. This does fall on the similar platform as some other red dots that you may be more familiar with. Like, for example, the Shield RMSC and the Sig Sauer Romeo Zero. Now, as I mentioned, I mean, I am certainly by no means an expert, but what I can tell you is this was extremely easy to put on and install. I was very careful, took my time, and I definitely leveraged a torque wrench. I did want to make sure that I installed this properly and I don't have any problems in the future. So you can see here, I took my time, I cleaned everything up, got a little bit of oil underneath my slide just to make sure that everything was protected. And you can notice that the factory screws that were actually holding on my iron sights definitely do not fit. So the nice thing is, the Holosun 507K does come with the appropriate hardware, at least for the SIG P365 XL. And as I mentioned, just cleaning things up real nice, making sure that I had a great start. I didn't want to leave any gunk, any grime, any sort of residue behind. And again, just taking my time, getting everything fit up nicely and making sure that this hollow sun was installed properly. That's going to help me later on with my zero and to make sure that if everything is properly torqued up, it doesn't accidentally loosen up over time. Now, the screws do come with blue Loctite. Again, that is something that I think is critical. I have used red dots in the past, and I kind of messed up and didn't torque them properly and didn't use the appropriate Loctite. So now with Loctite and 15 inch pounds, leveraging a T10 Torx bit and a torque driver, here you can see getting everything where it needs to be. So again, very simple, very straightforward, not a lot to it and pretty easy, all things considered. 
Now, a few details worth mentioning. This does come with a CR1632 lithium battery. This is something that you probably want to purchase every so often, maybe once a year, swap out the battery. People say, do it on your birthday. I'm not sure how I'll handle it, but we'll figure this out. Now, in terms of zeroing for me, the easiest thing for me is to use a laser cartridge. I do have a laser cartridge. It's pretty straightforward. It gives me the ability to use the bore laser in combination with the reflex sight to get everything zeroed in. The buttons in operation seem to be pretty easy on the Hollow Sun. I did find that you do end up with a couple of different modes. You have your 2 MOA dot and your 32 MOA circle. You can actually use those in combination, both having the circle and the dot at the same time. You do end up with your elevation and windage adjustments, and this does come with the tool to help you, which is nice. This is something that I'll probably keep in my kit take it to the range with me so if I need to make little adjustments while I'm out there practicing, I'll have the ability to do so. And this really didn't take too much for me to get it sighted in. It took a minute for me to get used to looking through this and within a very short amount of time, I had something that was a reasonable zero, not a big deal. But what about my holsters? This is something that I was definitely concerned with. I do have a couple of holsters that I really like and I wanted to make sure that I was able to fit my firearm full depth with full trigger coverage and still accept my optic. Well, no problem. So here you can see my VersaCarry IWB holster. No worries, very, very nice. Fit just about perfect, good and comfortable and no problem. So that's a big check made me feel really good about this and definitely leaves me with a solid viable option. Overall, very, very good. But this is not the final configuration for my carry gun. I do want to have a weapon light. So here you can see in combination with my Streamlight TLR7 sub, this works out very well. Also with my T-Rex Arms holster, getting everything installed well, of course, T-Rex Arms accounting for optics and this fit just about perfect. So now at this point, getting it mounted on my belt, very, very easy. Easy to get my hands on this. It does not interfere at all with the optic. So this works out extremely well. And at this point, I am in really good shape, not only having the optic, but my weapon light as well. So my carry system is definitely good to go. But now what about getting to the range? Well, this is where sort of the rubber hits the road a little bit, making sure I can get everything sighted in the way I need, hopefully hitting targets, hopefully having a good quality session. Well, there were a few things worth noting. First off, I did have a little bit of a learning curve getting on this. Now I was able to pick up the red dot, no problem. And I'm really, quite frankly, not the fastest shot just yet. It takes me a little bit to acquire my sight picture. It takes me a little bit to get on target, but at the same time, very, very easy. Now I can tell you that I have a few things probably mechanically that I need to work on, a few things with my trigger pull, a few things with my grip, but overall I am definitely improving in time. And for my first round of shots, 25 feet away, on the center of the paper, I had myself about a three by four rectangle, not too bad. So at three inches by four inches, I feel like that was a fairly tight group, but what about 50 feet away? And today I was kind of dancing between 25 and 50 feet, trying to really get a gauge on where exactly this red dot was zeroed in. And that's the thing, zeroing this in for me at home, it's not gonna be the easiest but I do tend to have the ability to get it to roughly what I would say is about 30 feet. So that's right in between the 25 and the 50, kind of gives me the ability to find a middle ground. So I did want to test on both 25 and 50 feet. Well, my first round at 50 feet, not too bad. About a four by four square. Now what you're gonna find is as we go through this today, a full 100 shots, all of my shots, almost all of my shots, we're a little bit left and maybe a little bit low, definitely a little bit left. I found as though I had to make some adjustments and I really don't think I ever got this truly zeroed into center. So for me, almost everything going left. Now, I don't know if that's technique. I don't know if it's trigger pull. I don't know if it's how I'm seeing my sights. I don't know if it's how I have it adjusted. It's just something I'm going to have to adjust to 
over time. I did not expect to get to the range and have everything perfectly dialed in right away. But the nice thing that I can tell you is, at least I'm fairly consistent. It might not be completely accurate, but it's fairly consistent. And here at 25 feet, a two by two square. So pretty tight. But again, remember what I said, low and left. Everything always low and left. And I know that's pretty common for a right-handed shooter and especially a beginner. But moving on to round four here, this is at 50 feet. Now again, getting a little more confident in my sight picture, picking up a little bit quicker. I need to do a little bit better on my trigger, but at the same time, I'm doing pretty good here. Getting on paper here again at 50 feet, not too bad. All things considered, pulling this in at roughly a four by two square. Now, again, keep in mind the fact that I did not even hit the number three. You'll notice the number three there. I danced all around it, never really truly hit it, but all in all, roughly on average, about a four by two square. Now here, round five, again at 25 feet. Now I did find that a couple of times I had to make a little bit of an adjustment. I was really trying to get this dialed in so that I was more accurate on center. But again, I never truly could quite find it. And I think it's because for a couple of reasons, I'm hand holding, I'm not bench resting anything. And again, just trying to get used to it while I'm here for the first time at the range. I know this will definitely improve over time. And the other thing is, unfortunately for me, I forgot my tool. Granted, Hollow Sun does send it with the package, but I forgot it. I left it at home. It didn't even dawn on me. So that again is something that I'm going to absolutely have to get into my range bag. That's going to be instrumental in my ability to really perform these basic tasks and adjustments while I'm out at the range and getting in my practice. But here, round five, a little bit better and starting to feel pretty good at 25 feet, a nice four by four square, almost all of them hitting right in the target. That is definitely a vast improvement. Not perfect, but a nice improvement. Now here, round six. Again, this is at 50 feet. I was trying to kind of hit center mass on the target. Now you can see I am actually making some improvements. At this point, I was feeling my trigger reset a little bit better, trying to stay a little more firm in my grip. Now with the SIG P365 and 365XL, it is a small gun. It can be a little snappy. It can be a little bit hard to hold on to. It's not like a full frame gun, but at the same time here, you can see not doing too bad at 50 feet, roughly a six by three rectangle area. Not too bad. And I'm actually feeling a little bit better about this. At this point with the hollow sun, getting a little bit more used to it, getting a little bit better at picking up the actual holographic sight. And I can tell you another thing, I probably should have dialed it in a little bit brighter. Now, that is another thing worth noting. Hollow Sun saying that this does have 10 daylight modes and two night vision compatible brightness modes. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit in some detail. Now, I have done a couple of other little bits of footage here to show you on the different brightness settings. And the other thing is the different MOA dots. So here, again, wrapping up round seven, 25 feet, trying to hit the number three, not too bad. Getting a reasonable result with a four by four square area. And so that is something worth mentioning here as we get into round eight at 50 feet. Now I was using the 32 MOA circle without the red dot. And I found I did have the ability to kind of look through the entire optic without it inhibiting my vision. I was very target acquired. That is what I absolutely love about the red dot. I was not really looking at my sight so much, but rather staring through the gun, staring through the sights and all the way to my target. And here at 50 feet, not the best, but not the worst. Again, hitting the target a couple of times, roughly a six by five square area, feeling pretty good about the progress. But the other thing now worth mentioning with the Hollow Sun HS507K, this red dot does in a way co-witness with iron sights. So the back end of the HS507K does have integral iron sights. So my ability 
not only to leverage the red dot, but as a backup set of iron sights, this is key. And as we head into round nine, well here, I am literally using just the iron sights. I turned off the red dot altogether. Now the red dot does seem to co-witness with the iron sights, which is nice. It seems like it's pretty much dead on from what I can tell. But again, here, I really did wanna test the iron sights and the iron sights alone. So at 25 feet, you can see, I'm trying to really get on target, take my time and get some good accurate shots. Now, I can also tell you that I've had a little bit of an issue with my front sight. I think it may be just a little bit off center and it might need a bit of an adjustment. But again, at 25 feet, reasonable results. A fairly tight group, a little bit to the left, but at least in terms of elevation, I'm pretty close to spot on. I know I'm dancing around a little bit and it's not the tightest group, but overall, with iron sights as a backup, a four by four group, I'm all right with that. If I needed this in a pinch, this would absolutely get me what I need for results. And last but not least, what about those iron sights at 50 feet? So again, the same mentality, no red dot here, just using the backup iron sights and trying to hit my target at 50 feet. Now I am trying to simulate, in essence, a headshot here at 50 feet, which is not that far, but it's also not that close. And for backup iron sights here, looking through the red dot, how's it gonna go? Well, I can tell you, mixed results, not the best, and something I am definitely going to need to practice. And you'll notice that by the end of this, all of my shots are quite left, which tells me that I do think that either one of two things, I'm either not seeing this very well, or I think my front sight is just off. And as we get a quick look here, pulling into the target, well, Again, I was going for that headshot, everything far to the left. Certainly not hitting exactly where I had hoped, far off to the left, and probably not the results that I'd really hoped for. Roughly a six by two rectangle area, but again, not accurate for my needs, but all in all, a great test for this red dot. Not just with the 32 MOA circle, but with the backup iron sights as well. And so I'm not exactly sure what Hollow Sun is going for. However, they do say that there are 10 daylight modes and two night vision compatible brightness settings. And as you take a look here, you can see I did use an infrared camera to take some images. And so you can see I've gone from the brightest setting all the way down through about setting six, which is the least setting that the infrared can actually see. And anything below that, it kind of drops out. And so I don't know if they literally meant night vision, meaning my vision at nighttime, or night vision, meaning like infrared night vision capable equipment. But from what I can tell, you really can only use infrared equipment down to around setting six. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the Holosun HS507KX2. For me, this has been absolutely a fantastic, and I'm going to say start, to open reflex sights. The red dot, mounting it on my pistol, my handgun now, set up for my daily carry needs. And again, I go back to some of the key points, which is, this is my carry handgun. I really don't want to mess around too much more with this. I want to get it set up. I want to have it configured the exact way it's going to essentially live its life. And then I just want to practice with it time and time and time again. Get comfortable with it. Be proficient. Know it inside and out. Know what to expect. Be on top of the maintenance. And just enjoy the way it operates. That's the thing. The carry pistol needs to be repetition. If I set up other firearms for different reasons, well, so be it. But for me, as a novice, somebody growing into firearms, and the fact that this is my real carry pistol, I definitely want to be mindful. And at this point, I am definitely happy with how this has gone. And the Hollow Sun HS507K, absolutely instrumental. Now, I do find that overall the brightness is sound. I have no problems with it. The battery life, I can't really speak to that. They say 50,000 hours on setting six, which is sort of what, an industry standard at this point. I don't know what to tell you about that. Only time will tell. Now, I'm coming up on my birthday. Do I change out the battery? Eh, that's a whole other philosophy. So again, at this point, 
I'm better off just carrying it, getting used to it, using it, and kind of figuring out the battery life, even if that means for me, it does die. I kind of need to know these things. I need to get a little bit of practice. And does it leave me a little bit vulnerable? Yeah, it does. But at the same time, there's only one way for me to figure it out, and that's to kind of go through it and learn on my own. So with that said, I mean, all things considered, easy to mount up, no problem. I like the settings. I think the brightnesses are ample. I love the reticle. And my shots, even though not perfect, they're getting in the right direction. And the fact that I have the backup iron sights, that's actually really cool. And the other thing, the fact that the actual dot itself does pretty well co-witness from what I can tell with the iron sights, I think this is a really great option. So durability, haven't tested it yet. Battery life, haven't tested it yet. But everything so far from what I found I definitely like this. And so, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, flashlights, backpacks, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.